This is your daily dose of all things royal. Welcome back, my gorgeous, good-looking friends. Boy, do I have a video for you today. Some of my gorgeous, good-looking friends had given the suggestion for me to go check out Candace Owens' series on Kamala Harris, as they felt that there were many similarities of who these two women claim to be, meaning how their life has been laid out for the public to see. Candace Owens has been challenging the various narratives of Kamala Harris's ethnicity, her background, her family, as well as her past, in the same way that I have challenged Meghan Markle in this Biggest Fraud Alive series. Many of you couldn't wrap your head around it, despite putting the hard evidence in your face, and I understand that. It's a lot to take in once you discover that you've been duped for six years. As Candace brought her claims forward, she was also experiencing similar pushback of people sending her messages, trying to convince her otherwise, particularly around Kamala Harris's grandmother, Beryl. But I was receiving a ton of emails from people that were insisting that Beryl was Kamala's grandmother. Among the emails were a flurry of people suggesting that I speak to a woman known as Lady Colin Campbell. She also goes as Lady C. Yes, you heard that right, folks. Lady C. Lady C on yesterday's broadcast had a woman that she knew from Jamaica who said they knew Beryl. Uh, Lady C said that she was hoping to host that friend on her podcast in the future and that the woman would spill all of the tea on how she knew Kamala's grandmother, Beryl. So I just waited. And I will tell you, the conversation did not go as Lady C expected. I think primarily because people who did not watch every episode of this series into Kamala were not quite understanding what we were uncovering. There were all of these people making response videos. And that is exactly what had been happening with the Biggest Fraud Alive series, where we saw a certain family panic and had other creators go out and create division as well as discredit people's work, all for just pointing out inconsistencies and asking questions. Pretty much attacked for using critical thinking. We simply did not believe that the woman that was presented in Kamala's book was her. We believe that this was a case of stolen identity. Essentially, there was a barrel, but the woman that was being pictured was not the grandma, and they were being playing funny business like commies do, switching identities and it was strange that even though Kamala presented a picture of Grandma Beryl in the book, she didn't mention her at all in the book. Now, doesn't this feel familiar? I want you to stop and think, how many times have things just not made any kind of sense when it came out? Such as when Meghan and Harry used this person named Ashley, portraying to be Samantha's daughter and coming up with that story. Never again have we heard what happened to Ashley. She never did any follow-up interviews. We didn't hear anything from Samantha. I mean, there are so many examples that like my head is spinning right now, but I think you get where I'm going with this. There are way too many inconsistencies with Meghan Markle's stories or narratives that she has fed us over the last six years for us to say that, oh, it's a coincidence, or maybe we misunderstood, or maybe they forgot. Everything that we have been told has layers of inconsistency. That's not normal. Search Lady C uh, was good on her word. She hosted Dorothy, so the Jamaican woman who grew up and knew Grandma Beryl, Miss Beryl, personally. Miss Beryl is the grandmother of Vice President Kamala Harris. Yes. And she was just the most delightful lady. Mm -hmm. I have such fun memories of her. And um, Miss Beryl had a shop. Mm -hmm. And in the mornings, my Uncle Cecil would mm -hmm. take me by the hand. We'd go up the road for a walk. Mm -hmm. And on the way, Everyone that goes past, it would be, good morning, Ma Cecil, mm -hmm. and how are you, Miss Dar? Okay, a couple of things flagged to me as uh, interesting there. Very clearly, though, we know she's telling the truth right away because this is a good fact check against what Donald Harris wrote. Now, of course, naturally, Kamala Harris then comes up in this conversation and Dorothy keeps this same positive energy. She's very positive, right? She has a spirit about her. She's and she's delightful in her approach about Kamala and Kamala's features. She really likes Kamala's facial features. Mm -hmm. um, and Miss Beryl, by the way, mm -hmm. I see Vice President Harris on mm -hmm. the box. Mm -hmm. And I sit up straight and I think, mm -hmm. my God, mm -hmm. 
She looks so much like Miss Beryl. Her facial features, the only mm -hmm. thing is Miss Beryl was much smaller mm -hmm. um, in stature, mm -hmm. but... Well, okay, if yeah. Miss Beryl, because Camilla is very fair-skinned. Right. Was Beryl fair-skinned? Yes, she was. She was? She was. She was fair-skinned. She was? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yes, she was very fair-skinned. Oh. With black hair. Really? Yes. Oh, okay. So she was so fair-skinned mm -hmm. that now that I'm older mm -hmm. and I can spot people mm -hmm. by their skin colouring, etc., for me, I would say there was something Irish there. How interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mm -hmm. would say um, somewhere along the line, she mm -hmm. would have had ancestors that were Irish. Mm -hmm. Yes. Actually, can I can I show you a photograph? Of course. Of an old lady. Yes. And some people speculate yeah. that this is Miss Burial. Right. So, oh, sorry. Bear That's with me. okay. I am so <laughs> <laughs> on technological. Okay. It's just pathetic. Yeah. There we go. Um, okay. Now. Nah. That's not Miss Beryl. That's not Miss Beryl. That's definitely not Miss Beryl. Oh. Okay. That's not Miss Beryl. Oh. Okay. That's not Miss Beryl. <laughs> that is not Miss Beryl. That's not, not Miss Beryl. Definitely not Miss Beryl. Okay. And I, I, I know what she looks like. I couldn't have been in a dream, and she mm. definitely did not look like that. There's another person, but could that be Miss Beryl? No, that's not that's Miss Beryl. That's not Miss Beryl. That's either. not Miss Beryl either. Okay. Don't know who that is. Okay. Okay. Don't know who that is. Okay. I think in this moment, this is when the penny dropped for Lady C. And I hope, I really hope that she gets to that place with Meghan Markle. Maybe she will, maybe she won't. Only time will tell how this all unfolds. And I do believe that there are forces working to try and shut my voice down, which gives me a good indication there's a lot of truth in what I've been saying and showing everybody. <sighs> That's not Miss Beryl. That ain't Miss Beryl. You know, as you were describing the fair skin and looking like Kamala, I was thinking this can't be the Miss Beryl grandma that's in Kamala's book. And clearly you see Lady C's going, wait, fair skin? What did, maybe, is this? Nope, that's not Miss Beryl. <laughs> I didn't dream. That's not Miss Beryl. Yeah, that sounds about right. You're saying Irish. And that's funny because Judge Joe Brown had a very distinct memory that Donald Harris told him that he was Irish and Hindu. And things are starting to add up, not in Kamala Harris's favor, and I don't know what to say here. Candace, I know what you can say. I told you. What did I tell you? Didn't I tell you? Because I told you. Mm-hmm. And when did I tell you? A long time ago. And what did I say will happen when I told you? Exactly what just happened. Now, as many people know, I'm not a part of the aristocracy, nor did I go to fashion school. This little commoner went to university and graduated with two degrees as well as an advanced degree called a master's. In order to obtain those certificates and credentials, I had to use a certain level of critical thinking skills and logic. I would not have been able to graduate if I didn't have some kind of intelligence. And just because I do not have over 2 million subscribers or am known like Candace Owens or like Lady C doesn't mean that my work should be discredited especially if people haven't taken the time to look at it to then make that fair assessment and give evidence as to why we should believe the narratives that we have been fed, particularly around the Markles, Megan's childhood, and everything about her past and who she is. Now, the next comment that I want to make is a generalized comment, not directed at anyone, but if there are content creators that are out there telling their audiences to unsubscribe to other creators or in general to unsubscribe to people that are not sharing the same perspective and opinion that that content creator is putting out there, that should be a red flag to everyone. Not only is that hindering people to be able to consider all options and be able to critically think themselves to come to their own conclusion, but it's also manipulative, malicious, and very tribal to influence people in such a way. Now, I know that my gorgeous, good-looking friends are all highly intelligent beings. We know that the only way that we're going to get to the truth is if we are free to explore and challenge the narratives and ask questions, as well as have open civil debate around it. 
Now, if you've been with me on this journey for several years now, there are just too many things that don't add up. Now, I don't think it's too far of a stretch that Meghan Markle came out of the same school of evil and thought that Barack Obama and Kamala Harris came out of. Candace Owens does a great job talking about this topic in this video titled, Are They Breeding Politicians? Of which she highlights the shadiness with Barack Obama's past, the shadiness with Kamala Harris's past and things not adding up, as well as the internet being scrubbed just like with Meghan Markle in order to put out an image or brand of a person that they're trying to put up in power. It's my opinion, but I think Obama was the success story that they have been trying to replicate with all these other figures that they have been propping up. All of these puppets for this globalist agenda have been an epic failure for the world. Truly, they have. And, you know, for those that don't see Meghan Markle as a political figure, I want to ask you to open your mind a little bit, because even though she might have been this sucky actress... She has been involved or aligned with many political figures that are carrying out this agenda. I think there's a lot of closed-minded people that don't want to even explore the fact that this is a possibility of what happened with Meghan Markle and how we have been lied to and manipulated over the last six years in this psychological warfare that they have unleashed onto the public unknowingly. And it's becoming clearer and clearer that all of this is to drive this censorship agenda that really has been driven by Barack Obama. The very same people who want to make the online world safe are the very same people who have been attacking us with these online trolls and creating these farms. I mean, we know this is a fact. Getting control back of the information that people see is really a priority for these people. Even Barack Obama at Ethel Kennedy's funeral couldn't resist to make this political by injecting this narrative around the division and hatred that we're now facing. Well, whose fault is that, Barack? Let me end with this. Uh, We live at a time of such rancor and division and suspicion and loneliness and we isolate ourselves with gadgets and diversions and we're encouraged to chase after things that don't last and we have trouble distinguishing what is true from what is false and we succumb to those voices that find it profitable to stoke anger and grievance And even in resisting such voices, we so often find ourselves succumbing to cynicism or despair. What better time, then, to remember the life that Ethel Kennedy lived? A woman who understood that our salvation comes from turning towards each other, not turning away. Someone who reminds us by her example that life goes on no matter how deep the grief. That there is joy and purpose to be found no matter what hand we've been dealt. That each of us has the power, if we so choose, to make our world a little better and to make somebody else's life a little better. And that we can have some fun and make some mischief in the process. I think it's gross he did that. And imagine Robert F. Kennedy Jr. sitting there amongst all these traitors to the United States and having to, you know, bite his tongue while his family embraces them. I don't know if you guys saw the snub with JFK Jr. to Biden. He wanted nothing to do with them. Watch this clip. I mean, talk about awkward. Imagine having to look at the people who have been destroying the United States of America as they get up there in your mother's funeral to talk about her and democracy. Like, I can't imagine how uncomfortable that would have been for Robert F. Kennedy Jr. And then on top of it, your entire family is supportive of the policies. They have Gavin Newsom sitting there, John Kerry, who is the biggest WEF member, Barack, Clinton, Pelosi, some of the most corrupt politicians of our lifetime, all in that church. I'm surprised they didn't catch on fire. 
Let us not forget that this is the same Kennedy family that Carrie Kennedy came from who awarded Meghan and Harry this Ripple of Hope Award for institutional racism, which they never gave back. They're all nothing but hypocrites and out for themselves. They don't care about democracy. They don't care about freedom. It's all about money for them. So I want to close this video out with a few words that really resonate with me by Candace Owens in summarizing what has been going on with Kamala Harris, as I genuinely feel that she could apply this to Meghan Markle. I don't think I possess within me the adequate vocabulary to discuss my distaste for a woman who borrowed a black person for her, her autobiography so that she could secure the black vote. Do you understand how fundamentally racist that is? Do you understand how despicable that is? I mean, you have to be the worst kind of political vermin to borrow a black person to put in your book, to present to the public as your grandma. Before I go, I want to say thank you to my viewers for being here and being supportive of the work that I'm doing here, as well as suggesting to check out this series with Candace Owens. If you haven't seen or watched some of her videos, I highly recommend it, especially if you can't wrap your brain around what has happened here with Meghan Markle. I do believe that we're on the right path. Another thing that I want to say is that I am truly grateful for each and every one of you. I would be nothing if I didn't have the input or ideas that come from our discussions after these videos and helping me along in this journey. I think we've all learned so much, and I think that's really what this is all about. The more that we can be aware, the more that we can make decisions that do affect our life, and that's exactly what we have established here. And for me, I'm truly grateful. So thank you. But on that note, let me know your thoughts. As always, I will be back with more content. But until then, please be safe. And I will talk to you later. Bye. Oh, yeah. Such a broad. Huh?